Why would the Dolphins want to trade out of six when they trade back up into six as part of that big, huge uh, deal a few weeks ago? What's going yeah. on there? So here's kind of my understanding of where the Dolphins are. So obviously they were at three, and then they took the huge bounty of picks to move back to 12. But if you're at 12, you're sort of kind of out of the mix, right? Like you, you lose the ability a little bit to do whatever you want, and you don't get to almost control it. I think the idea is when you were at six, even if you have to give up a first rounder to do it, which obviously the Dolphins did, um, you're much more of being, you're much more in control of your own fate. So they trade up or they trade back, they trade up. And now let's say quarterback slides to them. Then someone who wants to come up, like they can basically hold them hostage and go, we're going to get the quarterback premium twice. That's basically the thought is say like, we're going to make sure that someone pays us to draft their own quarterback two times, not one time, which increases their draft haul. So, okay. Um, I I still, I get it. I mean, but at some point you got to hit the draft it now button, right? I mean, you're you're, right. And like, let's say, you know, let's say Kyle Pitts is there at six to me. They probably just take him. I mean, that's a guy who, I've spoken to, I don't know how many people, but 25 pages worth of notes. And I haven't had anyone find anything wrong with Kyle Pitts. It's almost <laughs> funny. It's like Quentin Nelson a couple of years back. Like, everybody loves him. Um, so maybe the Dolphins just take him. Otherwise, like, they're going to be able to get some incredible value. They might trade, trade again. So, okay. Kyle Pitts isn't lasting till six. Right, I mean that may uh, there's there's uh, I mean that would mean four quarterbacks and then um, Jamar Chase or or right. or or, or, or Penny Sewell right uh, to the Bengals and thus that that's the glorious heavens opening up for Kyle Pitts to stay in the state of Florida and play professional football. That's the way that would work. Yeah, I would say the only way that Kyle Pitts goes to six or you know sort of last to six, which is, again, possible, is if the Falcons take a quarterback. And they have looked hard at the quarterbacks. Um, I know something Peter King mentioned, and I would echo this, that Arthur Blank very much wanted his people to at least take a hard look, investigative look at the quarterbacks. That is something he wanted as an owner to make sure that whether or not they drafted one, they were ready to draft one. So that means the Falcons are in the quarterback mix possibility, whatever. So if the Falcons take one, then I think Pitts probably falls to the Dolphins. And then, you know, then it's either do they trade out or do they just take maybe the best player in the draft not named Trevor Lawrence? See, I, I guess if the, the one thing, again, though, is, is um, and Chris Greer deserves an amazing uh, amount of credit and respect for what he is doing at the general manager position in Miami. And that is... That is that is a very long all due with all due respect. I'll be very honest, because at some point though, and you know, get the guy you want. You want Kyle Pitts. You've got a million draft picks. Go get Kyle Pitts. Call up the Falcons and say we want him. And you know that the Bengals. I mean, the Falcons would just run the risk of of ho- hoping the Bengals don't trade out. You know, they're not going to take the quarterback that you might want, and go down to go down to six and get the quarterback you want anyway. You know, I know that, that, that you do run the risk of that, but the Dolphins at some point, you know, it just reminds me of the Sixers. They masked all those picks, and eventually they, they did turn it into players and had to go right. win with them, right? That's just the, that's why hearing that, hey, the Dolphins might trade out again, I'm like, that, that kind of made me stop and go home, you know, Ian, you know? Yeah, it, it kind of made me also, um, but it makes sense because it, it makes sense in this way. If you... If someone is going to take a quarter, like let's assume right now that the Dolphins have the franchise quarterback, right? Which I would say across the NFL is much more of an open question than the Dolphins would like, but they believe in Tua. So let's assume for the sake of argument, they believe in Tua and their quarterback question is over. If that's the case, then I don't mind them gouging everyone else for a quarterback because... You know, Kyle Pitts is, I think, going to be a great, great player, and everybody loves him. Absent that, there's some, maybe some similar players up until, like, the 12th or 13th person in the draft. Then it kind of flattens out a little bit. So you have, like, a group of great, great players 
probably up to 12 or 13, and then you have everyone else. So as long as you can stay in that mix, theoretically, you're going to be getting a great player anyway, maybe just get the capital. That's, that's be, that would be kind of my explanation for the Dolphins. And in the end, you know, we'll see what they'll end up doing. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.